Hello everybody, welcome to another video and welcome to the fifth and final part of the Power Mac G5 Hackintosh build. Over the past four parts you've seen me plan, modify, build and install OS X on our G5 Hackintosh. And to close things out it seems only right to put it, put it through its paces. So in this video we're going to run some benchmarks, play some games and just in general take a step back and evaluate how successful I think this project was. And before we begin, if you want to see an in-depth write-up of everything I did during this project, from the dremeling of the case to wiring up the front panel, then check out the Tony Mac x86 link in the description down below. And if you also want to see some really nice, super high quality glam shots of the finished product, then I'm also going to leave a uh, Flickr gallery linked in the description as well. But with that said, let's run some benchmarks. Starting off on the OS X side of things, here we've got Blackmagic's disk speed test. It's pretty much become the standard for testing your disk speed on a Mac, and as you can see, our dinky little MSATA SSD is pulling in around 440 megabyte a second write, write speeds and over 500 megabyte a second read speeds. And of course, I was running this exact same SSD at SATA 2 speeds in the 2015 Hackintosh build, and seeing these results just proves to me how important it is to run a modern SSD on a SATA 3 bus. To test the CPU and the memory, we've cracked out good old Geekbench. To give you some sort of a comparison as to what scores I've been used to in the past, my 2006 Quad Xeon Mac Pro benched around 1500 in single core and around 6000 in multi core. This G5 with a Core i5 processor benches, as you can see, 3600 in single core and nearly 11,000 in multi core. That is absolutely insane and worlds apart from even the Core i3 based Hackintosh I ran throughout the majority of 2015. Moving on to the GPU, and here we're running Cinebench. I've run a GTX 660 of some description in my main rig since 2013, so I know pretty much exactly what I'm getting here. Rock solid reliability, superb value for money, and decent performance. 72.75 FPS isn't going to blow anyone away, and it falls short by around 20 FPS to its current gen equivalent in the GTX 960, but as you'll see in a minute, gaming is still very, very doable on this beastly little card. Before we jump into gaming though, cooling was a massive focus during this project. So I want to show you what sort of temperatures I'm getting while doing both general day-to-day -day stuff as well as more heavy work such as rendering video. Here you can see I've got Safari, iTunes, Twitter and Mail open. This is my basic general use scenario. I always have these apps open. And as you can see, our GPU is sat at an ice cold 28 degrees Celsius. And the CPU sits at anywhere between 30 degrees and 36 degrees, depending on what web page is open. For a whisper silent PC, that is very, very impressive. And to get all four of the CPU's cores sweating a bit, I ran the infamous yes command in terminal. After letting it run for a few minutes, the CPU tops out at just 43 degrees Celsius. Regardless of what I'm doing, I have never once seen the CPU temperature go above 45 degrees Celsius. Having a computer that can keep itself cool at idle is always good, but having a computer that can keep itself cool when working its absolute tits off while staying virtually silent at the same time, for me at least, is absolutely mind-blowing. Let's boot into Windows and jump into some games then. Now personally, I always prioritise performance over fancy settings. I cap all of my games at 60fps, turn VSync on, and then dial down settings to get as smooth an experience as possible. But in order to get every component working to the absolute maximum of its ability here, I turn my frame limiters off, turn VSync off, and crank the settings up to as high as they could possibly go that could return a minimum of 60fps. This is Bioshock Infinite, one of the prettiest games I think I've ever played. And to my surprise, I was able to run this game maxed out on ultra settings at 1080p and average a very impressive 74 FPS on this now two generation old GTX 660. The game never dropped below 64 FPS and the temperatures looked very good as well with the GPU maxing out at 68 degrees Celsius and the CPU at just 39 degrees Celsius. Moving on to another well-optimized GPU-heavy game, this is Tomb Raider. I couldn't quite squeeze Ultra out of this game, but I was able to run on high settings at 1080p and return an average of 70fps. Again, the GPU maxed out at 68 degrees Celsius and the CPU at 44 degrees. And lastly, Grand Theft Auto 5. Now the Core i3 I had in my 2015 Hackintosh build really struggled with GTA 5, but with the Core i5 installed, the GTX 660 just has so much more room to work with, it performs like a different card. Here I'm running on high settings at 1080p and averaging a very impressive 84 FPS. Once again, the GPU reaches its thermal roof of 68 degrees Celsius 
and even with the CPU working overtime, it only tops out at 45 degrees Celsius. What an awesome, awesome computer. And there we go. That draws a close to the Power Mac G5 Hackintosh build series. I think it's safe to say it has been a resounding success. 10 times better than anything I thought was realistically achievable going into it. Um, it performs like an absolute beast. It runs cooler than any system I've ever used in my life before. And um, of course, it looks totally 100% the part. So all I can say now is thank you for your support throughout the series. This has been one hell of a lot of work, more than anything I've undertaken before on the channel. And uh, the support I've received from you guys has just been absolutely incredible. It's made every single second 100% worth it. So um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed the series. And as always, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.